everyone super fin guy here uh, this is my response to dr. Jason J Campbell uh, inspiring philosophy challenge uh, called free iPad 2 uh, from Best Buy giveaway long live philosophy and a tribute uh, to Christian Huygens a scientist from the 17th uh, 17th century whose philosophy and work have uh, helped me in my understanding of uh, physics and how to approach the phenomena of our known universe and that is on what this video is going to be about just in case uh, you're wondering who Huygens was well uh, he was the first person that showed and explained that light is a wave phenomenon the person that came with the science we know today as optics that light is a transverse wave or operationally an, an oscillation and energy that is passed on successively along straight paths even what we call photons today are not actually particles but the harmonics or resonant frequencies of this uh, radiation he also was the first to discover the laws of motion not Newton and better than describing gravity he also operationally explained it he actually thought that Newton's theory was unacceptable in science since it didn't offer an explanation not to mention that he was the inventor of the pendulum among other things like the internal combustion engine Huygens is not a household name because his uh, philosophy was based on reason and observation, you know, on cognition. In contrast uh, with the one that most scientists have today, that is merely based on perception, empiricism, and largely anti-conceptual. What Huygens called the true philosophy helped me a lot to actually understand physics. Yes, reminded me it is about physical phenomena. Oddly enough, today most so-called physicists think, for example, that the electromagnetic uh, radiation light is not a physical wave. I'm going to present to you a glimpse of his natural philosophy in his own words. First, here is a, an introductory excerpt from his paper, An Essay on the Cause of Gravity. Essay on the Cause of Gravity Preface Nature acts in ways so secret and so imperceptible, bringing to earth bodies that are said to be heavy, that any attention or industry that the senses may employ, there is nothing to be discovered. This has forced the philosophers of past uh, centuries not to seek the cause of these wonderful facts on the bodies themselves and to attribute it to some inherent and internal quality which makes bodies uh, go down toward the center of the earth or there is an appetite of the parts to unite the whole which doesn't convey to expose the causes but assumes obscure and uncomprehended principles one can forgive those who are content with such solutions in many occasions but not so much for Democritus and those of his sect whom had undertaken the pursuit to give reason to all about the atoms except for the gravity which they have attached to earthly bodies and to the atoms themselves without inquiring where it could come from among the authors and modern restorers of philosophy Although many have found it necessary to establish something outside the body to cause the attractions and escapes that are observed, yet they have hardly gone beyond these primaries when they have resorted some to a thin and heavy air that by pressing the bodies makes them descend because it is already assumed as a heaviness and it is very much against the laws of mechanics to want a heavy and liquid matter to press down the bodies that it surrounds. On the contrary, it ought to make them go up, assuming no weight in themselves, just as water raises an empty bottle that's been submerged. 
others to the spirits and immaterial emanations, which clarifies nothing, since we get no conception how the immaterial can give movement to a bodily substance. Mr. Descartes has better recognized than those that preceded him, that will never comprehend nothing of advantage in physics, that we can tell of the principles that do not exceed the scope of our mind, such as those that depend on bodies, considered without qualities, and their movements. But as the biggest challenge consists in the realization of how so many different things are done only by these principles. That is why he is not very successful in several specific issues that he has proposed to examine, which, among other things, in my opinion, this one of gravity. It may be judged from the remarks that I made uh, in a few places on what he has written, in which I should have been able to reach others. And yet I confess that his essays and his views, though false, served to open up the path that I have found in this very topic. I do not give it as being exempt from any doubt, nor to what one cannot make objections. It is rather difficult to go that far in the research of this nature. Yet I believe that if the main hypothesis in which I rely on is not true, there is little hope that we can meet it by remaining within the limits of the true and sane philosophy. Besides, what I bring here, being that it concerns to the cause of gravity, does not appear new to those who have read Mr. Rahold's Treaty of Physics, since my theory is reported there almost entirely. For this philosopher saw my experiment of the rotating water, and having understood the application that I was doing, as he ingeniously uh, acknowledges, found sufficient probability in my opinion to want to follow it. But because in my thoughts he in no way mixes those of Mr. Descartes and his own, and that he omits many things that concern this matter, of which he couldn't know of, I'm well satisfied we saw it as I have treated myself. To find an intelligible cause of gravity, it must be seen how it can be done. We only think to be in nature the bodies that are made of the same matter, in which we don't consider any quality nor any inclination for them to approach one another, but only the different sizes, figures, and movements. How? So it can be that, however, many of these bodies tend directly toward the same center, and have stayed gathered around it, which is the most ordinary and the main phenomenon that we call gravity. The simplicity of the principles that I concur does not leave much choice in this research, since we consider first of all that there is no appearance attributes on the figure, nor the smallness of particles some effect similar to that of gravity, which being an effort or an inclination for movement must probably be produced by a movement. So the only way is to find in what way it could act and in what bodies it can be encountered. Simply regarding bodies without this quality we have called gravity, their movement is naturally straight or circular. The first is concern when they move without hindrance, the other when they are held around a center, or that they turn on their own center. We know in no way the nature of straight movements, and the laws that bodies hold in the communication of their movements when they meet each other, as much as we consider just this sort of movements, and the reflections that occur among parts of matter, we don't find anything that determines them to go toward the center. We must therefore come necessarily to the properties of circular motion and see if there is one that could serve us. And this concludes this short video on the philosophy of science. Uh, I'm planning to make a part two on this same subject, but uh, for now I'm out of time. Well, till next time. Well, Merry Christmas everyone.